with the advancement of the open source projects, more and more C2 frameworks have been developed. Now, the question is, which one do I use? I have asked the community in Twitter, which C2 frameworks are you guys using? And I saw a lot of hype about Havoc, Sliver, Metasploit, Cobalt Strike, and that gets me motivated to perform and create a video series of reviewing every single C2 framework into determining where it's their strength and their weakness. So in that case, we are talking about Havoc. Havoc is an open source C2 framework mainly developed by Sys Spider, I hope that I pronounced correctly, and I think that the massive hype between it is first, it looks just awesome. Like if you see it here or in my already open instances, you can see it's pretty well done. And the second point I want to make is I think that it gets a lot of hype because of what it can do. For instance, the demon, which is the beacon in Havoc, is using sleep obfuscation, and I am thinking that this is the only open source C2 framework that use the sleep obfuscation. What sleep obfuscation is, is it allows you to encrypt your payload when it's not running for a command. That means that memory scanner would not be able to catch it. Also, we can see the effort Havoc is doing to be as evasive as possible by using the indirect Cisco or NT APIs instead of the standard Windows APIs. We have the SMB support and plenty more nice and cool stuff. So without further ado, let's shoot up the Havoc showcase how to install it and let's give it a try. The installation of the Havoc C2 is pretty much straightforward and I kind of enjoy the process because you need to navigate to the documentation which is gonna lead you to the official website of the Havoc, then the docs and then the installation and here you have to just literally copy and paste depending on your OS version. So in my case I'm using Kali so I need to stick with the dependencies of Kali. Of course, first you need to get command repository, cd into it, and then just run this huge command, only that one, and pretty much then you need to run this and this. Now, you're good to go. After you build a client, you can end up in a directory where you have something like that. Now, here we have two main main parts of the Havoc. We have the team server, which is responsible for all the backend logic and stuff. And then we have the client, which is, able, which is the graphical UI, which is going to connect to the team server itself. Now, Havoc is nice because it's written in Go, C and C++, which, which makes it extremely fast. Now, since we, we follow these steps right here, um, we have that Havoc binary, which can be used for pretty much anything. So with that binary, we can do Havoc server ND, which is going to use the default profile. I'm going to type my suit password real quick and that's it. So that's how you start the Havoc server. Now it's a nice thing to have uh, to go into the profiles and analyze what these things are. For instance, cat Havoc. This is how uh, you can tweak the port, the IPs, compiler and operators add more and so on in that case i'm sticking with the default but what i super like about havoc is as you can see it's super customizable for instance we can by default change the sleep jitter of course this can be modified in the runtime but we can also change the process to inject or spawn and a lot more things so these are the profiles you can tweak more profiles you can create your own if you want which i think is a good job from the creators of the havoc now if you want to start the client, we have to go back into the run directory. Now we need to do Havoc client and that's it. So we need to specify the IP, the port and of course our username and password. Now I've already done that so I'm going to just click connect and it looks like I did not. So I'm going to pass the password one more time. Password 134 and there we are. Now, the UI, I can say, is just amazing. If you click control, you can zoom in into the, like, the panes. You can see a bigger picture. We have the team chat where we can type something quite high. All right. Then we have here are all the callbacks, and this is the menu. Now, on the menu, of course, we have to first start the listener if we want to accept connection. Now, that's been done by Havoc uh, View, listeners. This is going to spawn a new pane. Click add. And the UI is pretty straightforward, but at the same time, highly customizable. So for instance, I can do add. It's going to by default add my host. Of course, I can edit that, but I don't need for now. So just click add. I can give it a name, for example, main. I can specify either HTTP, HTTPS, SMB or external, which to be honest, I'm not sure what that is. Then we have host rotation. Let's do it random. Again, I'm not sure what that is. That is as well. Maybe 
if we add more hosts it has some predefined ways of how to rotate them so they are not stacked as malicious domain or something then we have the bind interface of course i'm gonna stick to that one the port is gonna be by default we can tweak the user agent i'm not going to and i'm not going to add any additional header source or uri to make my connection more customized now i'm gonna click save and with that we can see the main listener has started and there it is of course we can edit and remove it from here but i don't want to do it for now then what, what, what we're gonna need of course a paywall but before a paywall let's just see what Havoc can do and oh my god i do i think i killed that beacon of mine never mind i'm gonna showcase how we ended up here now let's see what else Havoc has here we have script manager which oh it's world in scripts I'm not sure which what scripts never mind but what i pretty much enjoy is this script console so here you can pretty much run any python code and you can do whatever you want programmatically meaning that you can automate stuff in that c2 framework now here on the attack we have payload tab that payload tab is responsible for generating an executable or dll or shellcode now the agent is called daemon by default which nice name by the way then we need to specify the listener, the architecture, which by default and only for now is x64, and we have the format. Now, as I said, we have the exe, service exe, they differ in various ways. Then we have the DLL and the shell code way. Now, in order to make things simple, I'm gonna just generate a Windows executable file, and let's see what options we have. First thing is the sleep time, which by default is two seconds, that's how it's defined in the profile variables. The jitter is zero, jitter means how much time it's gonna add to random basis on top of that two seconds, meaning that if I add jitter time and sleep is like five, it can go like from five to four to seven to eight, depending on how much jitter I add. Now, on the sleep technique, here what it becomes interesting. That's why I'm telling you about the sleep encryption. What that means is, as I mentioned before, while your beacon is waiting for a command for instance now it's good thing it popped up so i can demonstrate it so for instance you can see it each 10 second is changing a command while it's unresponsive the payload in the memory is getting encrypted meaning that if memory scar goes by it's not gonna see anything and don't underestimate the memory scars because they're hyped now nowadays as well so that's a huge thing uh, we have to try a bunch of options and see how they work against various CDFs and AVs, but for now I'm gonna stick it to the default. Then we have the injection. Now, here's another thing I enjoy. We have the native syscalls. We can choose between Windows APIs and native syscalls for both allocation and execution. And then we have a process to spawn to. Of course, this can be mod uh, modified, but we don't want it for now. With that being done, I think our payload is good to go, so I can generate now. We have to wait a little bit so it's uh, it's compiled. And I forgot to mention that it's by default using indirect syscalls, so that's a big deal. I really appreciate the efforts of Havoc of trying to be as evasive as possible. Now, it should be done in any moment. Yep, it is. And now I can go to desktop. I already have daemon.exe, but I can call that daemon2.exe. So I'm gonna save now. All right, and that's it. So let me open up that CD. I'll get to my home, then do CD desktop, and then do Python HTTP server 80. And let's download my Payload on the command VM right here. Now I'm gonna refresh the page. We have that daemon to that exe, which is now downloaded. I can open another terminal and start a new one. CD into downloads. And there we have daemon to that exe. Run that. Go back to here. Go to Havoc. And we have another callback. If you enjoy the content you see and want to support the channel, feel free to subscribe, like the video, share it. That helps me a lot. If you have further appreciation, don't hesitate to become my Patreon. It's highly appreciated and that will keep me motivated to build in more content like this one. I also have a Discord server where we share experience and knowledge. So if you are interested and want to learn more, click the link in the bio 
and see you there moving on now as i mentioned what that is doing is it's gonna spawn a new or i can say sacrificial process inject its payload into it and then start the whole process of things now we have two callbacks uh, i'm gonna use that since it's super like faster because we set up the sleep time i can of course modify that but i don't want it for now let's do help to see what that big boy can do now we don't have that much commands to be honest that was my first impression when i was playing with havoc but the commands we have i think are enough so let's try the screenshot here because i didn't do it before so screenshot even that all right successful took a screenshot now i believe that we can view that inside the wood section yep there it is we have a screenshot so run that and there we are we look how nice that was done <laughs> good job by havoc i enjoyed the c2 framework so far let's see what else it can do now we have let's analyze each command we have the help of course then we need the sleep which is gonna set up that uh time interval between the callbacks we have the check-in which i believe should request an, a, a check-in just to see if the beacon is alive i think then we have the job uh which these are commands these are modules i believe that in modules you can have mo like more commands but i'm sorry if i'm if i'm wrong on that then we have uh three modules job task proc which means job manager task manager process numeration management ma and management we have the dir which should be like the same as ls seeing the, yeah, the current directory listing the files then we have download and upload which by themselves are enough we have the cd cp remove which are all file operations so far mkdir p w cat screenshot shell which should spawn cmd.exe command and we have powershell which is gonna spawn powershell exe command now we have inline execute which to be honest i'm not sure what that is so let's try help inline execute execute an object file oh so it's using yeah we, we when you compile and see object file you can execute with that which to be honest is the first thing to do that i in my experience then we have the dll which is gonna perform a dll injection based on specific dll exit of course which is gonna kill the beacon we have token manipulation now i can do like token or help token and we have a lot of things here why like get your id these tokens impersonate tokens this native command and module can be used for pvh escalation and yeah token manipulation then we have dotnet all that module is doing is running dotnet assemblies so let's do another help dotnet and we can do this version and inline execute so you just specify that dotnet inline execute specify your assembly and you're good to go now what else we have uh, we have the module for network assessment so by default c2 frameworks are using their own network assessment tools they are not using cmd for example for ip configs and so on but they are internal apis and modules for getting the network interfaces that's considered more stealth then we have config we can configure the current daemon things then we have the pivot so we can establish tunnels forward the port establish a socks proxy and pretty much do another ticket operations as i said that's not as much as mythic for example but i believe they are quite enough you can as i said run powershell run shell run dotnet assemblies have token manipulation download screenshot upload and that's pretty much enough all you think all you need can be further downloaded modified and executed so with that being said let's try to execute dotnet assembly to see how that work i can do uh help dotnet again dotnet inline execute and now we need to specify or i can do help can i do it yep i can so usage dotnet inline execute path to assembly dot exe and specify the arguments so do i have assemblies here that's the question cd opt and then do what was that dot net or sharp collection all right i have it so let's go to hmm. not dot net framework 4.5 any 
And let's try rupees.exe. So, all right, we have it. I can do PUW, copy the path, then do .NET inline execute, paste that, and do rubios. Can I do tap out complete? I guess not. What permissions do my things have? They have to with permissions, so I should be able to get them. So, rubios.exe, that's the exact name. Ru views.exe and I think I'm gonna just run it that way without any parameters just see if that thing is getting old and it is when I review every single C2 framework I'm gonna put their beacons against the anti-scan interface now don't get me wrong anti-scan me is mainly signature based interface and all the open source products are just way too easy to get signatures right that doesn't mean that this can be bad in real time scenario, but of course, in order to use it, you have to perform your own obfuscation and AV slash EDI version techniques. With that being said, let me open up the anti scam interface. Let's click browse, then go to the desktop section, open the daemon.exe, scan file, and let's hope the API is working now. The API turns to be working and oh my god, I'm amazed from the results. We have 7 out of 26 for a default beacon from Havoc. I did not do any additional obfuscation, I did not any additional ETR AV evasion techniques and just right off the bat, we have 7 out of 26 detection rate, which to be honest is quite an amazing. Hope you enjoyed the C2 framework. That's, that was my review and I highly suggest you guys to when you're doing some kind of CTFs engagement or anything related to, to, to actions you're gonna need C24 just try as much CTFs as possible. In a nutshell I am super happy about Havoc, the UI is clean, the commands are not overwhelmed and are simple but are useful at the same time. Havoc is trying to stay evasive as much as possible. Of course, you don't have to rely entirely on the on the Havoc's demon because it's heavy signature, because mainly it's open source. But we appreciate the effort of it staying under the radar. And I can say Havoc is a pretty nice C2 framework and now I can understand the hype before it. I'm gonna definitely start using that on my engagements and on my CTFs and trainings. And yeah, we'll see how that goes until the next video. See ya and have a nice one.